Hello everyone, and welcome back to another YouTube video. Today I will be listing my top 5 Overwatch abilities based on their competitive viability. These abilities are, in my opinion, the most impactful and powerful abilities that exist in Overwatch, as of the writing of the script. With each ability, I will give my reasoning as to why they're impactful. Additionally, I will provide a few tips on how to use the ability to get the most value. The funness factor of each ability will not be used in assessing each ability, only their competitive viability when used in the most optimal way. Though this list is weighted, meaning that number 1 will be better than number 5, every ability in this list has the capability to completely transform the state of a fight. If you enjoy this type of content and would like to see more, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. It will take 5 seconds to do and means so, so much to me. With that out of the way, it's time to get into my list. At number 5 on my list, I have Anna's Antibiotic Grenade, simplified to Anti-Nade. This ability, when used on your teammates, boosts the amount of healing a target receives. When used on an enemy, it can completely deny the enemy from receiving any heals. I would have put this ability much higher if it weren't for the fact that it was recently nerfed in the most recent patch, dubbed the Junker Queen or JQ patch for reasons which I will get into later. The reason why this ability is on my list is that it has an incredible amount of versatility. You can use it as a tool to save your allies, you can use it selfishly to keep yourself alive, and you can use it to completely stop the momentum of the enemy. Are you in the middle of a fight and you whip your nade? Don't fret! With the ability only having a 10 second cooldown, you can use multiple nades in one fight, assuming you don't die of course. This ability isn't perfect, however. In the Junker Queen patch, Anna's nade does less healing on impact. This change unfortunately makes the anti-nade less viable as a tool for survivability. In other words, don't rely on this ability to save your butt when you're forced to duel the Genji for the fifth time in a row. This ability also has a steep learning curve associated with it, meaning you're going to have to master the trajectory of the projectile before you can maximize its value. One important tip when using Anti-Nade is to not throw it out for no reason. Additionally, try to use Anti-Nade when the fight starts to break down. Though it's on a 10 second cooldown, that shouldn't be an excuse to autopilot the ability. Finally, you should actually use the ability. Don't wait for the perfect moment if there are 10 good enough moments right in front of you. You can create good opportunities to use the ability by searching for cheeky off angles and high grounds. With that being said, my 4th best ability is... At number 4 we have Tracer's Blink. This ability allows Tracer to blink forward by 7.5 meters in a fraction of a second. Tracer can have three blinks at any one time. When used in succession, Tracer's blinks can take her a maximum of 22.5 meters. At first glance, this ability may appear to be underwhelming. Sure, Tracer gets three blinks, and each blink only has a cooldown of three seconds, but it doesn't do anything, right? That is wrong in almost every sense of the word. Blink is what single-handedly allows Tracer to become arguably the best duelist in the game and thus the best DPS in the game. When used properly, Blink will allow you as Tracer to essentially live in the enemy's flanks. When it is time to take a duel, Blinks can allow you to be nearly impossible to hit. Are you a blot burger and died? Don't worry, it happens to the best of us. Well, Blink can help you get back to the fight in no time at all. Blink is useful in almost every single scenario that you can find yourself in. So this ability does have its drawbacks. 3 seconds can be an excruciatingly long time to wait as a Tracer player. If you blow all 3 blinks at once, you will have to wait a staggering 9 seconds to get all of your blinks back. That could mean that a fight will start and end before you even get a chance to participate. Additionally, you will have no movement options if someone decides to duel you in that time span. Blink can get you out of many bad situations. But if used unwisely, it can also put you in bad situations as well. One tip for blink usage is to always keep at least one blink ready before taking a duel. 
Watch your blink usage carefully as to not use blinks when you don't need to. Additionally, don't forget to use blink to move sideways or backwards. Mastery of non-frontal blinks will help elevate your tracer to the next level and make you an utter nightmare for the enemy team. Our number 3 ability is... Iriko Suzu ability, often called Bell because, well, just look at it, is an ability which can provide a brief moment of invulnerability when thrown. The ability also provides a minor knockback effect on impact. Suzu is better than every other immortality ability because it applies both an immortality effect and a cleansing effect. Suzu is the only ability besides Zarya Bubble which can provide both effects simultaneously. Suzu is superior to Zarya Bubble because it has a sizable AoE which can give both effects to multiple people. This one ability can negate multiple ultimates such as Rhine Shatter, Tracer Pulse Bomb, and Junker Queen's Rampage. Suzu is also the only ability in the game which can full cleanse or remove every status effect from a target. Though it's longer than Bubble, its 14 second cooldown ensures that you can use multiple in a long fight. That cannot be said about other abilities like Bap's Immort Field and Life Weaver's Life Grip. Downsides to Suzu are few and far between. All I can really say is that the ability does follow a projectile trajectory meaning that you can't throw it an infinite distance. Since the Suzu projectile also has a travel time, it won't activate immediately after activation. Other than that, the boop effect which the Suzu creates is weak, causing it to have very few niche cases. Similar to Anna's anti-nade, the greatest tip with Suzu is to actually use the ability. Take note of every character's breaking point and practice timing your Suzus right before that. Also, similar to Antinade, don't use the ability for no reason. Though Kiriko is arguably the hardest character to punish, a good flanker or sniper would take full advantage of any moment of weakness that you create. Now it's time to look at my number 2 ability. Junker Queen's Shout is an AoE ability which gives everyone within a 15 meter radius a 30% speed boost and 50 extra points of HP. The ability also gives Junker Queen 200 extra HP that lasts 2 seconds longer than other teammates. In my opinion, Shout is the best tank ability in the game. It was a close call between this ability and D.Va's defense Matrix, but Matrix has been consistently nerfed throughout all of Overwatch's history. Shout gets the edge over Matrix because it's just downright broken, giving overhelp and a speed boost to everyone within a 15 meter radius, which is f flipping huge by the way, is simply ridiculous. Additionally, the extra buff it gives to Junker Queen herself essentially acts as a get out of jail free card. In theory, you can use this ability to get your team into position, wait, 14 oh seconds! God. Seriously, why is this ability only 14 seconds? To get another shout and then use it to escape any situation you may find yourself in. Under the current Junker Queen patch in meta, this ability is arguably the most important ability there is. You CANNOT autopilot using this ability. Also, be aware of where your team is so that you can maximize the value of every shout. You can probably get away with using this ability on only yourself, but it, that would be unnecessarily missing out on a ton of free value. With that out of the way, it's finally time to reveal what I believe is the best ability in Overwatch 2. It is... Mercy's Resurrect ability allows any eliminated teammate to be... Well, resurrected at the exact position where they died. After they are resed, they get a 2.25 second window of total invincibility. I'm gonna be straight to the meat with this ability, it breaks the game. Straight up, this ability just breaks the game's competitive integrity through and through. Why is that the case, you might ask? Well, to understand why Mercy's Res is the most broken ability in the entirety of competitive FPS genre, Yes, I'm going there. You have to understand the concept of punishment. 
In a competitive game of any kind, a punishment should exist to act as a consequence of making a mistake. Though they can vary in severity, they exist in essentially every competitive sport that exists. It's a very simple equation. Make a mistake equals get a punishment. In Overwatch 2, the punishment for making a mistake is getting eliminated. Whether it's a mistimed ability, or a misstep in positioning, every mistake in Overwatch SHOULD result in being eliminated. The reason why I said SHOULD and not WILL is because of a silly little ability called Resurrect. Res not only allows for mistakes to be left unpunished, but it actually REWARDS players for being eliminated. If you're a sniper that just got eliminated and Mercy is resing you, you have ended up with the information from how you died. As a result, you avoid the angle from where you got picked, giving you the information advantage. The fact that Mercy can res before or after a team fight makes the ability incredibly powerful. I can go into more detail as to how this single ability ruins the competitive integrity of Overwatch, but if I did, this video would be an hour long. In fact, I probably can make a video on Resurrect alone. If you want to see that video, be sure to leave a comment down below. Believe it or not, but this ability actually does have a critical downside associated with it. While Mercy is using Res, her movement speed is decreased by 75%. That makes Mercy a relatively easy target to hit while she's in the Res state. This downside can be effectively nullified, however, whenever Mercy uses her ultimate Valkyrie. In her alt state, Mercy can manipulate her hitbox in a way that makes her nearly impossible to hit. My biggest tip when using Valk is to have just a singular modicum of awareness while rezzing. So many Mercy players default to rezzing whenever it's convenient for them. But this will often put their team and even the target that's getting res in a sub-optimal position. So please, if you're playing Mercy, just be aware of your surroundings before rezzing. It will elevate your Mercy play to the next level. So, that was my personal top 5 abilities in Overwatch 2. Do you agree with me? Do you think some other abilities deserve top 5 instead of these? Whatever opinions you have, feel free to leave your opinions in the comments. I would love to see what you have to say. Also, reminder to subscribe to the channel and like this video. I may, probably will, make a bottom 5 abilities in Overwatch 2 in the near future. So keep a lookout for that when that drops. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Bye!